doing all right? And you? You're good. All uh, right, thirsty, bro? Uh, yeah, bro. Uh, uh, hey, man, can I get some drinks, please? Water? Water's good? Yeah, yeah, yeah water's good. Right. Give me water, please. Thank you, bro. All right, so, I, you told me a little bit about what happened with you. So, basically, what you told me is you had a listing agent. You came from the Bay. You're selling in Hollister. You wanted to sell within a month. Your house ended up being on the market for around a year. Is that yeah, kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, are you still working with this agent, or did you let him go? No, we're we're still actually working with him. Like, yeah, it was. Uh, we were told that it was going to be sold in a month because the market was actually popping. It was hot. It, the market was doing really good. We trusted the agent. We were hoping that that, would, that like what he said would would happen. Um, no, we've we haven't heard from him in a month and a half. Oh, okay. I have we we have we don't get weekly notices on what's happening. We have to reach out to him. He he does pick up our calls. He does. Kind of let let us know like yeah like it's it's doing okay, but nothing, not that much is getting done. Okay, um, very quickly, how often does he do open houses for the house? That I know, if he hasn't done any, um, oh. since we we hired him, he's only came by, done a couple of pictures, seven eight pictures of the house, listed it, and then. He's, wow. Um. Do you know by chance how he's marketing it? How he's getting exposure for your house, or is it just on the MLS? From what you know, I'm not too sure how he's how he's listing it or his, his tactics on on selling it or on the market. He just told me that, that basically he just said like, here's the pictures, here's what we have, and I'm gonna let you know when. Basically, yeah. when someone comes to buy. Yeah, he's like, I'll let you know when we have a someone who's interested oh, wow. in buying purchasing the house. Okay, so I'm kind of getting a better idea of what's going on. Um, so you're still working with him, but you haven't talked to him about a month or and a half? Or? Yeah, two months or so. Okay, interesting. Um, and uh, how, so how did you guys price it? I feel like this could have been a price issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, aside from not doing open houses, which is not good at all, but how was the price? Did you guys price it strategically? Um, by that, I mean, did he explain to you how Pricing it under market value might get more attention, or did you guys just price it at whatever you thought it was worth, or even above that because there might have been something better with the house, mm -hmm. or how how did that kind of go? Well, he is from the Bay. He he's he, he deals with with bigger cities. He, he's more like with bigger houses and stuff. So um, I think his tactic was uh, to sell the house at at a, at a higher price. With within that that market, like it's it, it's it is Hollister, it is a smaller town, but I th I think he did sell it uh, higher really because I, I told him that I wanted to to get it, to get it sold at a, at a good price, but as soon as possible because me and my family um, wanted to purchase another home. Okay, um, so there, there's a little bit of a difference between selling a house in the Bay out in Silicon Valley and selling a house out in Hollister yes. where there isn't too much. If they're not as priced as high, um, in the Bay, houses will sell a little bit faster than obviously, you know, a little bit south in Hollister. Um, and I understand that you probably did want to get the most for your house, but so here's the thing. All right, I'm, I'm going to put it to you like this way. Okay. Do you like cars? Do you know what a skyline is? Yeah, skyline? yeah, yeah. Sky, okay. Sky, yeah. So very quickly, if there are three, so let's call it four skylines, right? There are four skylines and they're all selling, I don't know what the pricing is on this, so I'm gonna just throw a number out there. They're all selling for, um, the price on the skyline on average is about $15,000. Just throwing a number out there, I'm mm -hmm. not saying, I don't know what they're priced at, but if these three cars are selling at 15, they're skylines, and this one's selling at 11,000, which one would you take? If they're all about the same, you know, they, they all, they're all the same type of car, same models, yeah. maybe one's a little bit more scuffed up, maybe one has an ugly paint job or something. Which one would you pick from the three? The, the $15,000 ones or the $11,000? Okay. okay, so my guess is he priced it at what it was valued at, right? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing with that. Everything that competes with your house that's priced around the same price that's your competition and you're not really doing yourself a favor by pricing it with what they're priced at. So let's say you, you your val the value of your house is worth, uh, it's at a 525,000, right? 
all the houses in the area are about the same price, you know, a little bit more, a little bit less, but on average, they're about 525. Now you have a few neighbors or maybe someone in the area that are listing it. One is at 525, one's at 526, one's at 523, one's at 520. If you're competing with these to sell, to sell it strategically, you're gonna to wanna to price it at a lower value. So if they're worth 525, a lot of people will go maybe, and this is exaggerating, but they'll be like 495. Now, you thinking as a buyer, if all these houses are the same, they're similar in square footage, bedrooms, condition, they're about the same age as well, which one would you jump on if you're looking for this type of house and these are up at 525, but this one is at 495? Which one would you? Which one would be the, the better deal for you? The other four it's kind of a no-brainer, right? Yeah. And you're thinking as a buyer. Now, all the other buyers in the market are thinking the same way. Yeah. So they ignore these. They look at this one. It's at 495. I can almost guarantee you that everybody and their grandmother are going to try to put a bid on this one. They'll offer you. Some will offer lower. Some will offer the same. And the smart ones will offer a little bit more because they know they're not the only ones thinking like this. So at this point, you have multiple offers on your house. And this is where the good thing comes in where if you have multiple offers, they have to outbid each other. Who wants the house? Now they know the limit is about 525 because that's what it's worth. So if they're outbidding, they, they know they can go up to 525. And if they really like it, they're going to go more. That's when you start making money. That's when that, so you, you put it at, you, you mark, you list it at a lower value, at a lower price, and then you start getting people bidding each other, outbidding each other. All right, well, person A, they offered 500,000 on the spot. Person B, they offered 490 because they're not too sure if there's competition or not. Person C has been doing this forever and they know what the market's like, they know what competition looks like. So they're gonna go up to maybe 505, 510. So, out of these people, you're gonna encounter everyone. Since this guy offered 510, you guys might wanna do a little bit more to, to compete with that. So, basically, you, you, you do a multiple counter offer at 510. And some people go, you know what, that's too much, or my mortgage isn't even that, or my loan isn't even that high, so I'm backing out. And at that point, they start kind of, you, you kind of start narrowing it down to who really wants it. And let's say, you don't get 525. You go, you go up. The max is 515. Okay, cool. So you're out 10 G's, right? Now you're out 10 G's, but you sold within that month, or at least you you got into escrow within that month. It's a little bit lower of price, but you're not sitting on the market for a whole year like you were telling me earlier. Yeah. So you do lose. I mean, ten thousand dollars is that really that big of a difference? To would you pay ten thousand to sell now? Or would you save those 10,000 to sell within a year or more than that? You probably lost within that year more than 10,000. Because you have to yeah. do the mortgage payments. Those mortgage yeah. payments don't stop. They're not cheap, yeah. So that's, maybe that's probably what happened where he didn't really price it strategically. And that's what we can do for you. Now, these are just numbers that I'm throwing out there, but your situation is a little bit different. Yeah. So we have to be very specific on what it's worth, where we're going to price that, and what you're comfortable with. And that's how most people do sell their houses uh, at a time. Or not at a time, but they don't take that long to sell. Gotcha. Anyway, man, if you have any other questions, bro, give me a call, text me. Um, I know you're still working with this agent, but if you decide to work with me, that's perfectly fine. Definitely. If not, that's fine. This is what I have to give you, the advice I have to give you. Thank you. Um, and I, I look forward to earning your business, man. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Thank you.